Hi everybody, I'm Richard from Electric Classic Cars and welcome to 2022. We've got a fantastic year lined up for us this year, which I'm really excited about. Not least of all is Vintage Voltage Season 2 is coming out. So check out that 27th of January, I think the first one is coming out on Quest TV. We've got 10 more episodes in Season 2, that means 10 more cars. So some of which are actually in the workshop today. So as well as all Vintage Voltage Season 2 coming out, we've got some fantastic cars coming out as well. And if you've not noticed, we're also going to up our game as far as the YouTube channel is concerned. So we, we got a mic, check, 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 one, two. And we got a new camera guy, so my mate Tim is behind the camera today. Hello. And he's bought a gimbal. I have no idea what that is. So we're really going to try and up our game for the YouTube content for you guys as well. So uh, let us know down in the comments below what sort of like content you want us to show. More technical content, more finished cars, more test driving and being stupid uh, off-road in a Land Rover in the mud or whatever. Just let us know what you want to see and we'll try and make it happen. So I want to start this year and our new YouTube content, if you like, with a little bit of a workshop walk around. So, you know, this is the work, work, this is our toy shop, if you like. So uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tour as to what we've got actually going on at the moment. It's nice and quiet today, because it's Saturday afternoon, so the lads have gone home. All the noisy guys have gone home. Uh, so I'll start with this one over here, which is the closest to the fabrication shop, this end uh, of the workshop. And this is a, uh, a real favourite car of myself is a Porsche 914. Anybody that knows me knows that uh, I used to rally one of these along with Tim who's behind uh, the camera. He used to be my co-driver. Had some good times, didn't we, mate? We did until we hit the telegraph pole. Yeah, don't mention the telegraph pole. <laughs> so we did, uh, I don't know, something like six or seven years of rallying in one of these. So I really like these cars. Fantastic handling cars, uh, mid-engined, uh, real beautiful balance of the car and just turned in beautifully. So I think this is the second or third Porsche 914 we've ever converted. And this has had a lovely restoration. But if you come this way, you'll see some minutes. Um, you don't see that often in a Porsche 914. Poke your head in there. See if you can spot it. And for those that aren't familiar with Porsche 914s, I'll tell you, it's right-hand drive. So all Porsche 914s were built left-hand drive. So this has actually been converted to right-hand drive, which is a rarity, let's say. Um, there was a company called Crayford that uh, used to convert them back in the day. But I think this is uh, a conversion that somebody has done themselves, but actually to a really high standard. So this has come in um, to us uh, to get converted. And if you poke your head underneath, you'll see the lads are just starting it now. So they've got the small Tesla rear drive unit in there, which fits like a glove. But one thing they've got to be very careful with, and with any build really, is we want to make sure that the drive unit is sitting in the perfect position. So what does that mean? Well, essentially it means that, well, actually if I use this as an example, you don't want the drive shafts with too much droop like that because you'll put too much stress on the CV joints. And equally, you don't want them up there or you don't want them too, too far forward. Ideally, you want the drive shafts to sit pretty much level like that. So the guys are just lining it all up now before they actually start fabricating and welding up the motor mounts. So this is just starting its journey. This beautiful silver car. And over on my right hand shoulder, is another silver car which is at the other end of the journey. This has just got finished. This is actually one of the vintage voltage cars for season two. So I won't give you too much detail on this because you can watch the episode, but this is a, a BMW E9 um, CSL replica. So it's not a real CSL for those people out there that are going, oh, it's a CSL. It's not a real CSL, it's a CSL recreation. So it's got all the panels on it, such as this roof spoiler here, which kind of like uh, guides the airflow down uh, along the rear screen here and through into the uh, aerodynamics of the two rear wings here working together. So you've got the duck spoiler there, ducktail spoiler, and this wing here as well. So this is actually a really successful race car back in the day was a uh, BMW CSL and it's quite an iconic car. It's called a shark nose, if you like, and there's some features on the car actually. Uh, if you come around to the front, uh, I'll just quickly show you this. Because I don't know of any other car that has these on. So you've got these things uh, on each side as well. And there's no bumper on. It's just got a big splitter at the front here as well. So have a look at that iconic looking front. It's just beautiful. So 
I won't show you too much detail on this. I'll just tell you it's got a Tesla drive unit in the rear with huge amounts of power and torque and a hefty size battery pack as well to give it some decent range as well. But if you want to watch the build from start to finish, and this was a long journey because it's gone through a full restoration, then check out Vintage Voltage Season 2, which is coming up on Quest TV. So that's the BMW E9. And uh, what can I show you next? Oh, yeah, we're... we're um, we're doing a uh, forklift truck uh, electric conversion at them. No, we're not. That's, uh, just a, that's, a, that's one of the worst mistakes I've ever made. A diesel uh, a forklift truck. I wanted an electric one, but the guys persuaded me to get a diesel one. But I'll never do that. I'll never listen to the guys again. So, um, so this is an Alfa Romeo Spider. Uh, we converted this um, uh, some time back, uh, I think, actually, uh, last year. Um, but we put an epicyclic gearbox on it, kind of a prototype epicyclic gearbox on it, which was too noisy. Um, I really didn't like it. I wasn't comfortable with it. So we've dropped that back out and we're putting a different design gearbox into this car now. Um, a completely different um, uh, to an epicyclic gearbox. But obviously, you know, it's going to be a lot better, less noise um, and smaller too. Um, so the, this is just out at the moment because essentially we've got the uh, gearbox um, away with the machine shop, just getting the adapter plate and coupler made up now so we can bolt it all together and then put that back in. So this is just here uh, for a short time while we just swap the gearbox out. So this will be going, but this is, you know, a lovely example of uh, an Alfa Romeo Spider. Uh, it's uh, gone through a restoration with us as well. Um, so that's that. Next, we're another Vintage Voltage Season 2 car. So um, again, I won't go into too much detail on this, but this is finished now. This is going to the customer next week. Um, it's completely uh, finished, gone through all the test drives and uh, us usual sort of like um, a few thousand uh, miles of testing that goes into any vehicle that we've uh, not converted before. VW split screen camper. Um, the brief on this was to keep it absolutely original inside. So you still got the vintage uh, 60s camper smell, but you can see um, the interior looks pretty much exactly as it was when it came in, a little bit tidier. But what you probably won't realize is that we've hidden the battery pack underneath this seat here. And it's a full on uh, Tesla battery pack, another Tesla drive unit in the rear as well, a small Tesla drive unit. You don't want to too much power these old buses but it's certainly enough power to keep up with modern traffic and probably overtake quite a few cars as well you're certainly not going to see this with a massive huge queue of cars behind it going down to Cornwall in the summer if anything it'll be overtaking those cars in the queue so that's finished that's another season two vintage voltage car so watch that build and uh, on that program and next to it is my beast so my toy my Tonga toy uh, the fastest Land Rover Defender on the planet, 0-60 in 3.8 seconds. Let me know down below if there's anybody that's faster out there with maybe a supercharged LS swap Defender, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's the quickest Defender on the planet at, uh, at uh, 3.8 seconds to 0-60. So uh, yeah, this is my toy. Uh, just uh, storing it here for a little bit at the moment. I'll probably take it home uh, at one point when the workshop gets fuller. Um, now, MG Midget. For those that know us, um, this was one of the season one cars. So we built this about two years back. And what happens with a, a few classic cars um, is they, they go through what's got, what I call the uh, winter sort of like upgrade uh, program. Because a lot of classic cars have kind of come off the road as soon as salt starts going down on the roads, which creates you know rust issues and stuff on classic cars. Um, Instead of going into storage, quite often the customers would say, well, you know, can I bring it to you um, for some upgrades and some bits and pieces adding to it? So this guy is, I think, six foot three, maybe taller. I don't know how he fits in an MG Midget, but he does. But he's asked us to see if we can actually make it a little bit more comfortable, give him a little bit more leg room. Big challenge in a small car like this, but we've managed to do it. We've moved the seat a little bit further forward, uh, f further back now and also the pedals a little bit further forward. So uh, we've tested it with some of the lads that are um, above normal height, let's say, and they can now fit in it, whereas before they couldn't even fit in it, let alone drive it. So 
pretty sure we've uh, sorted that out for him. So this will be going back to the customer after a little bit more road testing, just to make sure everything's still fine with it. Um, probably a uh, week after next. I love this car. This is like a go-kart. It's got a Hyper 9 in, small battery pack, and it just flies around the corner. You've even got gears as well. It just, it's just like a go-kart. It's got some fantastic upgraded suspension and brakes on it as well from Frontline Performance. Um, uh, guys, I don't know if you know them, but check out Frontline for uh, MG upgrade stuff. They're great uh, to deal with. Um, another Season 2 vintage voltage car over here. We need to get this one finished because uh, you know the, the, the show's starting to air end of this month and we haven't finished this one yet. So uh, what we have done is we put the motor and battery pack in. It's uh, obviously a Porsche 944 S2. Uh, these had great handling back in the day. 50-50 um, weight distribution, you had the engine up front, gearbox in the back, strangely enough, and a torque tube between the two just to join them up. Really great handling car and I wanted to keep that. Um, so we put a, a battery pack at the rear, a small Tesla drive unit underneath, and when I say small, it's still 300 horsepower, so it's still got a bit of a punch to it, and the rest of the battery pack up front. And for all you tech heads out there, you'll probably be more interested in what does it look like, show us some of the conversion. Well, it's that. <laughs> That's the front battery pack. Uh, we've managed to uh, fit it into the space there, which is always one of the biggest challenges that we have. It's kind of a packaging challenge all the time with our builds is how and where are we going to fit the batteries. Um, so that's the front battery pack and the rear battery pack is underneath where the fuel tank used to be. Um, right, what have we got over here? Let's have a look at this car. So again, another vintage voltage season two car. This is called the Pumpkin and you can you can see why. So this uh, came to us as what I call a good 10 footer. So from 10 feet away, it kind of looked like a really nice looking VW Beetle. And then as you got closer, you realized, actually, nah, there's got some problems. So on the roof, for instance, it had massive um, paint blistering issues, which then turned out the, the paint that went onto the car had reacted. And we had to uh, take it to the paint shop and get it completely bare metaled again and, and um, uh, Resprayed. So uh, this has gone through a bit of a, a paint restoration with us. Um, it's got the cleanest engine bay in the world, as far as any Beetle is concerned. Check out that for a clean engine bay. So uh, you've got a Hyper 9 in there. There's the controller there and the charger there. Um, so yeah, this is just um, literally ready to get delivered to the customer now. It's just finished its um, test program. So we've uh, been testing it on the, on the road for the past few weeks. But again, if you want to see the complete build from start to finish, Vintage Voltage Season 2. I'm turning into a Vintage Voltage Season 2 like advert at the moment. I'll stop doing that. <laughs> um, here's some of the other cars we've got uh, building in uh, 2022. So this area of the workshop is what we call the strip down area. It's where we take out all the dirty, smelly stuff. Um, and as you can see, this one's already made a little bit of a wee mess on the floor. So uh, this is where all the engines and gearboxes and fuel tanks and exhausts and all that dirty smelly stuff gets dropped out. So if we start here, we've got a beautiful example of a Fiat 500. So we've got a left-hand drive Fiat 500 here with a lovely white interior. And the engine and everything's at the back there. I can see it's already been stripped out. And here is the kit that's going to go into it. So we've already uh, fabricated up the kit. You've got the front battery box there, rear battery box there. It's going to have three Tesla um, batteries going into it. You've got the motor cradle in here. So this is uh, going to go off for powder coating. As soon as that comes back then, this whole package then will move down the workshop there into the electrical uh, guys area and they'll start making up the battery packs and putting in the wiring looms and things like that. So Fiat 500 is uh, going to be built in 2022. And this, which I'm really excited about because I'm a VW nut, uh, this is a um, Volkswagen T3 Synchro. Synchro uh, means four-wheel drive, and the Synchro system in the LVWs is actually a really good four-wheel drive off-road system as well. So it's a very functional off-road system as well. So this is going to get converted into what's called an overlander spec, which means that uh, the guy wants to actually live in it for a number of weeks, uh, traveling long distances, and I think he's planning to uh, go to Egypt in it even. So this is getting built um, in the next few months as well. And actually, it's just getting stripped out now. It's not your average VW Synchro. And this badge will probably give it away. So this uh, badge here, um, 
if you swap that and that around, you'll, you'll probably realise it's a Subaru engine, and they turned it around to be Busaru, which I love it when that happens. So it's got a Subaru Boxer engine in, which you can see in here. So one of my guys at the moment, Pete, is just uh, dropping out the uh, Subaru Boxer engine, and we're going to keep the gearbox, and the plan is to attach a motor onto the gearbox, which then has all the four-wheel drive uh, system and... Uh, keeps that like off-road ability um, and the battery pack we're going to hide in a couple of places around the vehicle uh, we had a look underneath and there's no practical place to put battery pack underneath and equally I never like putting battery packs underneath a vehicle especially a four-wheel drive off-road vehicle uh, just because it can get hit by rocks and stones and stuff so we've got some ideas of where we're going to put the uh, batteries we're just going to spread them around the vehicle uh, some of them are going to go in this area here some of them uh, behind uh, or underneath the um, uh, rear seat so uh, really looking forward to this one getting finished because uh, tell you the truth I'm really looking forward to testing it quite frankly so I love to go off-roading and camping so and this is the perfect vehicle to me for me so if it works I may end up uh, selling my Land Rover and buying one of these so yep this is a VW Synchro this is going to get built in the next few months so um Next to it is a car I thought I'd never see in the workshop, quite frankly. It's a Ferrari Testarossa. And for all those purists out there that are saying, oh, I can't believe you're converting one. Well, close your ears because we're converting four. So this is the first one. And we're, as soon as we get our head around it and uh, drop everything out and figure out what we're going to do, we're going to bring in another one next to it and convert two at the same time and then build two additional kits then to do the other two vehicles as well. So this is a Ferrari Testarossa. It's got a flat 12. Actually, it's a V12 that's in a flat configuration. And the reason why it's not technically a flat 12 is because of the way the pistons fire and everything. So it's a V12 in a flat configuration. And as you can imagine, once this big beast comes out, along with the gearbox and everything else, there's going to be a cavernous space in here. Um, but we're going to do it justice. We're going to put a massive um, Tesla drive unit in, so which is uh, going to be more powerful, in fact, a lot more powerful than the original engine. Performance-wise, will be a lot faster as well. So that's going to drop in down there. We're going to put a battery pack there, battery pack up front as well to improve the weight distribution because I must admit, I wasn't that impressed with the handling of this car when I drove it. It was a little bit too light on the front and it just understeers a little bit. So I think it will benefit from a little bit more weight up front and like any Ferrari um, of this era, benefit from a bit more power. So we'll, we'll convert this to um, Tesla. So I think we'll have to change this badge as well from Tesla Rossa to uh, Tesla Rossa. So, uh, yep, four Tesla Rosses to convert. Never thought I'd say that. <laughs> and also in the workshop, my old friend, if you uh, have, a, uh, just watch yourself coming over here, Tim. Don't, don't trip. Um, this is a car I converted, uh, in fact, this is the second car I ever converted five years ago now. Oh, I feel old. <laughs> um, and I've not seen it for years. And uh, again, uh, you know, what happens in winter is some of these classic cars get just uh, stored because of the, um, uh, you know, uh, salt going down on the roads and things like that. So um, uh, this guy contacted me to say, hey, what upgrades can I have on this uh, now? What technology has changed? And I thought, well, one of the first things that uh, definitely has changed the most is probably chargers. So originally this had um, a, quite a slow charging system on it and actually quite big. The chargers were quite big and chunky. And now a uh, seven kilowatt charger is actually quite a small little thing. So we're gonna uh, put a, a faster charger, uh, charging system in it. And uh, I think that's it, really. So we, we've taken the battery pack out, just checking over everything is still fine because I've not seen it for years. And uh, it's just nice to see it. And it's in beautiful condition as well. It's literally the same condition, if you like, as I uh, you know, built it all those years ago, although he's definitely used it and he's got a lot more miles on the clock. But it's good to see that these vehicles are being used and looked after as well and being driven. You know, uh, you know he's got some stone chips on it uh, here and there, but... You know, it's, uh, there's no rust issues, it's, it's just perfect, it's a lovely looking car, and I drove it in here, and it drives just as well as it does, or it did, when I first converted it, so which is nice as well. So, yep, yeah, good to see this old friend back. This is ECC car number two, my first one. In fact, comments below, what was my first car I ever converted? 
Right, let's uh, go to the next one. What else we got over here? Right, ah, oh, this will probably be quite interesting to some. This is a classic mini kit. So this is a bolt-in mini conversion kit that's going off to uh, the USA, by the looks of it. So this is going to um, a partner of ours over there called Gildred Racing, or uh, Super Coopers, I think they're also called. Uh, going to start converting minis using our kit over in the US. So if you want a, a crazy, powerful, classic mini, Tesla-powered, then contact Gildred Racing or uh, Super Coopers, I think is their other name. Uh, this is a kit that's just about to go off to them. Obviously, we've got to powder coat it yet and fill it up full of batteries and get the um, uh, Tesla drive unit subframe and everything built up, but that's going off to them, so there we go. Um, and by the way, if you want to see a Tesla-powered um, um, mini, Vintage Voltage Season 2. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to start doing that. But. Um, and also, Vintage Voltage Season 2 car here um, is... Actually, uh, a really rare car is a Gordon Keeble. Now, there's a little story behind these lights. These rear light clusters here are only on two cars. The Gordon Keeble and, actually, comments below, see who knows what other car shares this rear light cluster along with a Gordon Keeble. It'd be interesting to know if anybody knows. Uh, so this was uh, a very rare car. I mean, if you thought the um, Ferrari Testarossa was rare or the BMW E9 was rare, they only built something like 96 or 99 of these. And um, this guy used to rally it back in the day, which is why it's got a half cage in. We've actually put a new cage into new, new spec, if you like, because the, the old cage was built back in the day. It wasn't really up to modern uh, specification. So we put a new half cage in it. Um, and... We've also started doing the interior. Um, again, this is one of the cars we need to get finished because essentially um, I think we've only got two more weeks uh, to get this finished and driving to be able to get it finished in time for season two vintage voltage. So um, interior wise, you can, say, you can see it's nearly there. Uh, got the carpet and stuff in, we've got the dashboard in with all our new dials, reading amps and state of charge for the battery and motor temperature and stuff. Just doing the uh, center console now with all the switches and other bits and pieces. Um, front battery pack. Um, obviously this car used to have a big V8 in and we've managed to squeeze in a front battery pack in the same space. Uh, radiator down there and you're probably wondering why have you got a radiator in an electric car? Well you still need to cool down things like the motor and the battery packs. Um, so essentially you still have a radiator or a thermal management system in electric cars. So yeah, the pressure's on to get this one finished, and it's uh, not not pretend uh, pressure like they have in some American uh, TV programs. It's just real pressure. We've got to get this finished uh, in the next two weeks. It runs, which is, uh, I'm pleased to say, and the battery pack is in, the motor's in, and it spins the wheels, but as you can see, still got quite a long way to go on this one. Uh, another rare car we've got in the workshop is this. It's uh, a Maserati Ghibli, a 1967 Maserati Ghibli and this actual car was the car that Maserati had on the stand when they launched this in the UK um, and the um, London Motor Show so um, it's got uh, a little bit of history but unfortunately it was a, a non-matching numbers car so um, the engine uh, back in the mists of time had essentially been separated away from the car at some point I don't know what happened and a different engine went in so beautiful looking car long bonnet um, I just think this is such a beautifully styled car beautifully proportioned car so the idea of this the guy's going to uh, use it as a kind of not an everyday car but you know a practical he wants a practical classic to be uh, um, uh, able to drive it and enjoy it so we're going to put um, a motor down low there driving the rear prop battery pack up front uh, battery pack in the rear but I mean you can imagine the size of the battery pack we can fit in this is going to be quite substantial so uh, yep this is another car that's uh, going to get built this year um, right to the back over there you've got another Fiat 500 uh, along with the um, uh, battery pack and all the kits behind it and that's something we're starting to do a lot more in electric classic cars now because you know the, the volume of cars we've got going through we started doing them in batches so you start doing two three five cars of the same at the same time like the Testarossas and the Fiat 500s 
and then I'll end on this one, which is a, a Mercedes 190 SL. Real ele elegant car, beautiful looking car. It's just come back from re restoration, and uh, we normally like these cars coming to us either already finished rest restoration, uh, or you know at this stage where we can essentially you know weld some tabs on here and there to be able to mount things on, and then it goes back for a full um, paint job uh, after that. So this is had its um, restoration done now um, so we're just going to get our teeth into the actual electrification figure out where we can put batteries how many batteries you can put in what motor is going to fit best in it um, so yeah we're just going to get our teeth into this uh, in the next few weeks so actually it's quite a few cars we got how many cars we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 16 cars in the workshop at the moment and those are just the cars that we have here at the moment we've got a massive waiting list as well and some real cool cars as well coming up in 2022 that aren't even here such as off the top of my head what we got we got some e-type jacks coming in um some uh, um what else have we got jensen interceptors i think we've got two jensen interceptors coming in um, we've got a, a Mercedes Pagoda, real old Pagoda coming in as well, and an Aston Martin, 70s Aston Martin V8 coming in. So there's some fantastic cars coming into the workshop this year as well that we're going to be building. So let me know, because we're going to upload a YouTube uh, game this year, let me know in the comments below what sort of content you want us to show this, uh, this year. Do you want us to show all this like build and techie stuff and do like you know a little bit of a session on how do you get heating into electric car and how does power steering work electric car or do you just want us to do mainly like show us the you know driving around doing bur bur burnouts and doing the crazy stuff so let us know in the comments below I'm really interested to know what you want as far as content this year we'll try and uh, do our best for that but uh, yep Hope you enjoyed this first little video uh, in 2022 and we're really looking forward to the builds. So um, catch us next time on uh, the channel. Mm -hmm.